This video is a review of the solid liquid solutions chapter of the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. We start by defining some different metrics for the concentration of a solute in a solution. We could either use mole fraction, the number of moles of the solute divided by the number of moles of solvent plus solute. We could use molality, the number of moles of the solute per kilogram of solvent. Or we could use molarity, the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. All right. Um, some of the no some of the stuff we used in the previous chapter in terms of getting the activity of solutes doesn't work whenever we have a non-volatile solute, something like sodium chloride, which has a negligible vapor pressure. We can't get from the vapor pressure. So we define what's called the osmotic coefficient which is the negative log of the activity of the solvent divided by the molarity, or the that would be the molality of the solute times the molar mass of the solvent, which is approximately equal to one if you're ideal. And then we can get the natural log of the activity coefficient of our solute from that osmotic coefficient as a function of molality, allowing us to get its activity and thus what its Gibbs energy is at any given point in the solution. We can look at some colligative properties, which are properties of a solution where the identity of the solute doesn't matter. It only matters what its concentration is. So things like freezing point depression and boiling point elevation, where the change in the melting point of our solution is proportional to the molality of the solute, no matter what solute it is, uh, going down in uh, the freezing point case and going up in the boiling point case. This is why in uh, cold weather where we have snowy environments, we pour salt on the road because the, uh, the dissolved salt is going to decrease the freezing point of the water. And that coefficient is determined by just the individual properties of the solution, the molar mass of the solute, the molar mass of this sol molar mass of the solvent, the gas constant, the original uh, freezing point and the uh, enthalpy of freezing during that uh, reaction, during that phase change. We can look at osmotic pressure, where when we have a barrier with a more concentrated solution and pure water on the other side, water is going to flow due to osmosis from one side to another. And it's not going to stop flowing until the osmotic pressure balances out the external pressure on the other side, where the osmotic pressure is going to be the molarity of our dissolved solute times the gas constant times the temperature. Then we can define activity for electrolyte systems, systems where a substance dissolves into ionic species, both cationic and anionic defining the activity of the solute in terms of the mean ionic activity, A plus minus, using the activity of the cation and the anion. And we can further define some terms using Debye-Huckel theory, which is exact for uh, dilute electrolytes, where its activity coefficient depends on things like the charge of the cation anion, the uh, screening, the inverse screening length, which depends on things like the ionic strength, which is the sum over all the ions of their charge squared times their molarity, as well as things like the dielectric constant, the permittivity of free space, and the temperature. So links to all of these original videos in the on-screen annotations, as well as in the description.